So guys, today we are finally going to be doing a review on the Timex Expedition at Sierra. Hopefully you guys like some of these showcasing back. pieces. As always, don't forget to check out the company, link below, if you want to support my company. Anyways, now getting into the Timex Expedition Explain a little Sierra. bit about this watch. Of course, this is a Timex uh, Expedition, and this is a part of the Expedition line. And that's essentially, the Expedition line is essentially the line that Timex makes for their outdoors and more rugged watches as well this is the little known sierra which is a part of the expedition line and to kind of explain how i found this one i was just looking through kind of watches just a whole bunch of makers and i actually found this timex expedition sierra i was like wow i've never heard of this or seen any other reviews on this watch and it actually looks like a really awesome watch and so that's what first prompted me to really be interested in it and like i said it's a really unknown watch and if you guys know anything about my uh channel i do really love showcasing some really awesome gear that's not really known about and so that was definitely one of the reasons why i got this so getting watch. into the different things that make up this watch so the first thing it's intended use like i mentioned this being a part of the expedition line it is meant to be a rugged outdoor watch and to go into some of the features that make it rugged are the first thing this is a water resistant watch down to 100 meters which is very good especially for most you know people like me who are hikers hunters we're not really going underwater but it is nice to know that should this ever be dropped in a lake you know i have accidentally dropped things in the lake unintentionally of course it really was a big accident but it's nice to know that if this is ever dropped in a lake or a pond and it's kind of a deep lake or pond if you can retrieve it it will definitely still be alive so i do like that water rating it is also shock resistant you guys will notice that hopefully you can see this black kind of band around the watch face how it goes like from the body and then there's the bezel here and in between those two is a piece of quite thick rubber so that also helps with shock, shock enough resistance and, uh, I, I've not found any problems with its resistance to water or to anything I've put it under and as you guys can see this watch I will note this is the second one of these I've had so this is not the original one I had but this one I've been wearing ever since January January, the middle part of January so now for around uh, three and a half months and I've been you know using it as a daily watch and so it's been going through the rigors of everyday life just fine it so looks been absolutely I... no scratches in this lens or in this glass which is quite impressive so overall the durability has been very good for my time to that it. it has quite a few complications as you guys can probably already tell complications for those non watch people are uh, anything other than the actual actual time you know keeping function so this one has a handful this one has obviously the chronograph it also has a tachometer uh, and it also has the date function on it so there's a handful of complications to watch to it. really interesting is the fact that it's a manual watch or in a way it's a manual watch because it still is a quartz movement so that means it is technically automatic powered off of a battery but it's unlike most battery powered watches in the fact that everything is set with hands so you have these three buttons here and everything that's done with this watch is done with these three buttons so there's no electronic displays or anything like that so everything Everything is set with dials and using these buttons and so that can definitely be a little bit frustrating but I do really like that uh, kind of manual set bit of durability it. and its intended use so now to wearability and comfort and I think that this is a quite interesting watch because another thing that got me is these straps and this plays into wearability and comfort and that is that these straps here are actually really interesting they're not only leather as you guys can probably quite easily tell but they also have a core and this will be a little wow, bit harder here yeah. is a cord or a nylon and so it's very interesting uh the style of watch band because it has the softness and the comfortability of leather because the direct thing that's actually touching your skin is leather so it's actually just very comfortable like leather or like a leather strap but it also has a lot of the durability and strength that comes from having a nylon band i also like the stylistic uh, 
approach with this. This is of course really not that functional, like it doesn't really serve any function other than to look cool, but I really do like it. And as far as the overall buckle goes, it's very easy to use and for me, I do have to keep it on the third rung. On my original one, I had to keep it on the second rung, but there's still enough allowance for me to wear this and I have pretty small wrists for anyone that doesn't know. I have like, depending on which wrist, I have anywhere from a seven and a half inch to a six and a half inch wrist. So I have pretty small wrists and it still fits. I can't necessarily verify how large it goes, but I think it goes pretty large because that's the largest hole. And so there's definitely a lot of uh, span here. But overall, I found it to be very comfortable to wear. And like I said, because the core of this um, strap here is nylon, it's very durable as well. It tends to dry faster. So, so with things like leather straps, if you get them wet, uh, leather likes to hold on to water for a long time unlike nylon, whereas nylon will dry out pretty fast. So having the core, the bulk of these uh, bands being nylon, I found that they dry out pretty fast, which is pretty nice. So That's pretty much all the designs, I will break into a little bit more of how this uh, whole thing functions because it does have some pretty cool features to it. Uh, but once again, really like the watch bands. Uh, you could replace them, but in all honesty, I think they're just fine and very well suited for this watch. So now getting into to the actual Watch face design of and this. Open. Once again, getting back to it, this is also has the chronograph features, though I do want to note, and you guys will probably be able to tell here why this big second hand hasn't been rotating. It definitely can. But one of the things that kind of confused me about this watch design, I think this is pretty synonymous with most chronographs, but this big watch hand, or this big second hand here, is actually the second hand for the chronograph. Whereas this small one down here, hopefully you guys can see it. I'm not sure about the reflections, but hopefully you guys can see it. But this is the actual second hand that correlates with the minute and hour hand here. So this big second hand is the chronograph second hand, and this correlates with the minute hand over, or not minute hand, but the minute area over here. And this is kind of one of my slight dislikes to this watch, and that is that this minute hand only goes up to 30 minutes, so it does two two uh, runs of 30 minutes and that correlates with the hour hand which is over here so or the hour area over here so that is a little bit like I said I kind of dislike the two sets of 30 minutes because if you got really busy doing something you could potentially not know exactly where you are because you would have to keep track and make sure that you understood that you had already gone 30 minutes past so instead of this being 10 minutes the next time you see it it might be 40 minutes and so that's sign that you could possibly mistake and that could be quite bad because once again you're putting a 30 minute gap in between those so as far as the hour hand I believe yeah, it goes to eight hours. I'm not sure how long the chronograph will actually just straight run. Uh, it does, I've tested it overnight. I do not believe it runs to eight hours, the chronograph, if you just like set it and let it go. I've The longest I've ever really set it and let it go is around four hours. Oftentimes I forget about it, but uh, I've seen it go to four hours, but I don't know if it goes to eight hours because once again, I usually set it before night and it's just like done when I wake up. But anyways, that's the chronograph, and once again, I'm not sure where it stops, but I do know it stops. And that is if you guys know how to use that. I, I know how it works, but I don't fully use it that much. It can be really useful, and it is something that's a nice feature to have on here because it uses or it correlates with the chronograph function already. Uh, once again, there is also a date function, but there is not a day date function. So with some watches, there will be like Tuesday uh, on March 11, or April 11th, which is this filming day. But uh, this just shows the 11th, so you would have to know it's Tuesday of April 11th. So this also does not show month, it does not show uh, the date on it, it just shows the day, which still is pretty handy, and in my opinion, I do actually like this the most of just showing the date. If they had to choose one thing to show, I do prefer day over date because on a lot of paperwork, which I've been doing a lot of paperwork here of late, it's always wanting you to know what day it is. So generally I actually find it more handy to have the day on know here if it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I may not remember what day that is in the month. 
but do keep in mind as well one gripe I do have about the day date function on here is because like I mentioned this is a full manual watch there is also no function to change this day or this yeah this date here to change this day here so what I mean by this is if you come up on a month that's especially something like February where there's 29 days you'll have to manually turn this uh, hour hand and you'll have to keep turning the hour hand until you f cycle through a full day and so especially when you're going from February to March it's the most annoying but even on uh, months where it's 30 days instead of 31 this watch of course isn't that intelligent to know that there's only 30 days in this month so you would have to make sure that you set that and you know manually go in there wind it past the 31st day because that doesn't really exist in said month kind of annoying um, because you have to cycle through the hour hand you can't actually use a, d a dedicated day hand so that kind of sucks in my opinion it makes it a little bit more tedious because like I said you have to cycle through two 12-hour so rotations that is the date function and that's pretty much all the functions I believe uh, on this of course I am going to roll in now the night functions because this uh, watch does have a few night functions which obviously I'm kind of trying to show them but of course because they're meant for the night they're not going to show off at all but uh, I will be talking about this and if you push this in to use the indiglo feature that is a specific Timex feature you press this button in it's really hard to see because it doesn't move much but when you press this button in it'll backlight the entire display in addition this model which my previous model didn't have but the newer models of the Sierra have uh, glow in the hand dark the night features are probably what I like about this Timex Expedition Sierra the most so there's two different uh, night functions with this watch so the first one and I'm gonna pop my flashlight to properly show you guys this uh, hope you guys don't get blinded there is that and I just wanted to quickly charge those up to their max so that you guys could easily see them but that is that there are two bits that glow in the dark here these are not tritium so they do not stay on forever I found their charge life it depending on how long you charge them and under what intensity of light once again, if you do it with like a flashlight like the one I just showed and you show it for you know around uh, 30 seconds the charge life will last for around four to five hours so it does hold charge pretty well though do keep in mind as you guys can see it will lose a bit of its edge and then what I found with this charged hand is it loses that really sharp edge and then it just kind of slowly gets dull and then kind of just hangs out at a low intensity which can be nice so that is the first thing and honestly that's not my most favorite part of our illumination part about this uh, particular watch because every watch or not every watch but most watches have illumination with their hands but what makes this Timex Expedition uh, special I just kind of showed it there is that this uh, watch uses Timex's Indiglo feature and the Indiglo feature is what I'm showing you guys right here and essentially what it is is it's a backlighting for the entire back of the watch and this is one of my favorite features about this watch because with it as you guys can see it lights up the entire back of this watch so you get to see all the chronograph functions of this watch the second hand the hour and minute hands for the chronograph as well as if you're running the big chronograph the second hand here you would also be able to see that whereas if you just have these two uh, hands the minute and the hour hand illuminated uh, you'll only get to see those which once again if you're using this watch as a time check generally all you'll be using it for is the minute and the hour but I really like this function of being able to see the entire watch interface this is also feature two is how it's set up so it's a little bit more complicated than just this so as you can see there is this momentary function of course that's controlled with the primary button which I'll show off more in the light uh, once I get to the other part of this review but when you press and hold down it'll if you hold it down for about five seconds it'll go into nighttime mode or I forget what exactly they call it but it's a special mode and so now it's no longer momentary as you guys can see you press and it's on for about four to five seconds and that turns off
and so this function is really handy if you know you're going into the nighttime or if you're like in a movie theater and you don't want to be holding that button you just want to be able to tap it and have it come on for a few seconds another way I found uh, with this nighttime function if you want it to be on for longer than a handful of seconds is if you hit one of or this down button here which sorry it's a little bit hard to show but I'll show in the light uh, but this down button here if you press that and hold it then you'll have indefinite just however long you need the indiglo function but keep in mind in order to take advantage of that forever as you guys can see how long it's holding it there you have to enable the nighttime mode before you can do that and once again pressing any of these three buttons will uh, show the night or this glow here but only once it's in that night mode so as you guys can see there clicking any of these buttons any of these three buttons will make it show now another thing about the nighttime mode is it only lasts for hours long so what I mean by this is if you set it uh, for nighttime it will only run for about four hours and then it'll switch back over However, if you want it to get out of nighttime mode before that four hours, you just hold this once again for another like six seconds and then it'll deactivate as you guys can see here. No more night function out of any of these buttons. So anyways guys, that's how the Indiglo function works and I'll show it more properly in the light so you guys can see my thumb better and like how it's activating these things. Uh, but I wanted to just do this at night so you guys could properly see the different illumination functions that this watch had because like I said it has a few and the different ways to use them so now back to the light so hopefully you guys like that quick showing of the dark and you guys got to see how this thing looks in the dark I do really love that indiglo feature if I haven't already mentioned it yet I really like the indiglo feature I think it's a really awesome feature and I kind of wish actually more watches would have that one of my favorite things about the indiglo feature is the fact that you have especially with the momentary you have the exact control over just how bright or how how you know when it's going to be bright and when it's not going to be bright if you just light up the hands or if the hands are glowing you have no control over that and so it can be a little obnoxious especially in places like a movie theater uh, where you don't necessarily want anything glowing or can attract attention it's kind of annoying it's really nice to have the option that you can still you know peek at it see you know what time it is even in pitch black but you have absolute control over it so it's not going to be just radiating light while you're not using it it's going to be exactly when you see it and it's gone exactly when you don't need it so I really do like the indiglo feature and like I said I actually wish more watches would have a, a lit up backlight to it I think it's a really cool idea about the other or my first one of these so like I kept alluding to I did have an original or another Sierra and that one was actually broken or at least it wasn't completely like malfunctioning in a way I guess it was but when I had got it out of box the second hand this big second hand here and the minute and hour hands were all moved or they they all always went back to the five o'clock position and that was even like if you let it run you can reset this uh, thing here uh, and it'll just reset but when it reset on the original one and whenever I tried to play with it it would always go to the five o'clock hand position not to mention because it was kind of broken in that way the minute and hour hand would tick already starting on those you know like in the five o'clock position so it would not give me uh, truly accurate readings I mean if you knew to account for it you could work with it but especially like with the minute hand and how it was off and it just got worse and worse over like if you tried to actually use as a chronograph with the minute and hour hands so or functions here so the original one that I got had to be sent back and like I said that was an earlier version this one the one that I got here that they replaced it with is a later version and the original one didn't have like the glow in the dark hands and uh, it was didn't have quite the same leather uh, bands so 
the, that was the original one and like I said that one had to be replaced as far as the customer service goes because you know I'm not necessarily going to bash Timex for the fact that you know they got a mistaking one or I got a mistaking you know one when it was broken because it happens to all big companies especially big companies but it happens to really all companies and I really care more about how I'm treated and how they you know help me through the situation and I will say it was pretty good I did have to wait probably a little bit longer than I'd like to have I waited about a month and in fairness that was month over December so like I sent it in middle of December and I got it back about middle of January so that's already a really busy time for a company so the turnaround in fairness due to that time as well it was pretty fast another thing I will say I like about Timex is they have this thing online that's like a repair center and essentially you do have to make an account with Timex but essentially what you can do with that is they will send you uh, updates on there so they'll send you like when they receive your watch when your watch has been repaired when they're shipping your watch back to you and so it's really nice to see that you can actually get updates you actually know where your watch is go be for having to send it back the only thing I was charged for was the return shipping back but they sent it or they uh, sent via email a free shipping uh, label so I sent it back for free they replaced it entirely for free and then it was like eight bucks for shipping back and so I figured because they entirely replaced this watch and this watch is already like hundred twenty dollars so they already replaced a hundred twenty dollar watch you know eight bucks really is not that bad so I just paid the eight dollar return shipping and like I said it wasn't too bad much the customer service uh, or my experience with customer service once again it was really good and very easy to use um, no real complaints there so other than that pretty much now on to competitive options this watch is pretty unique and like I said because it's kind of more a bit hard to you know put competitive options out there because once again you're getting a, a very unique watch for the price point but essentially around the hundred hundred twenty dollar price range I'd say the largest competitors to this I don't have them on the table would be different G-Shocks and I think that this watch would appeal to a similar audience of people who like G-Shocks and I'd say if you definitely like a G-Shock but you you kind of want more of a manual looking watch or a manual acting watch if you really like the whole fact of one a smaller and uh, kind of just overall more compact head and you like the full metal body and you like the whole fact that it's very manual once again that you there's really no heads up displays there's no electronics other than the backboard of course lighting up with the end glow feature but other than that you know really no electronics it is a very manual watch uh, if you like a lot of those features I would definitely consider checking out this watch another thing like I said that this watch has going for it is the fact that it's a very unique watch you're probably not gonna find a whole lot of other people out there wearing these watches just because they're so unheard of and unknown so with the G-Shocks there's a lot of people out there that wear them whereas this you're pretty much never gonna find another person wearing them so if you really like being unique this is definitely has an appeal to it and once again if you like the more rustic kind of leather and metal body and you like the whole manual feel to it you know this is this could definitely be a really great option for you and once again I think that's something that G-Shocks really don't offer so I really like that aspect about it and once again it's in the same price range as I'd say a mid-level G-Shock because you can get some G-Shocks for cheaper and you can get some G-Shocks for more They're, they span a very wide variety but I would say this hundred to hundred twenty dollar range is about the sweet spot for most Casio G-Shocks and like I said that's probably their largest contender with these or the largest competitor probably but overall like I said this definitely has a different look or a different style to them once again I will also note the fact that this is a pretty small it's not super small uh, head to it it's definitely smaller and more compact than something like a G-Shock because G-Shocks are pretty big and bulky and so that's another thing I've really liked as far as the wearability of this smaller head goes I like the fact that this is a smaller head 
Uh, it makes it a little bit a little easier bit more to carry. Once again, I do have smaller wrists, so I don't have as big a wrist. If I have larger wrists, it might feel a little bit small, but for my personal wrist, uh, it feels yeah, just you can see fine. there, that is what it looks like on there, and or that's what it looks like on my wrist, and so it wears, like I said, very great, and there's no real like bulge going off the sides, and so I think it fits me very well. I really like it. I like the style a lot. Like I said, I'm a big fan of this kind of tra more traditional look, but once again, it still is a quartz, so I never have to worry about the service fees of a manual kind of time when the battery dies, but it doesn't have to, you know, be worn around. It doesn't have to be carried to, you know, keep it going. It has its battery, and I really do like the accuracy of the quartz is really great, especially for the affordability of the price. So, anyways, guys, that is essentially my thoughts, and after a few months of carry on this watch, once again, I really do like its unique style. It is very unique like for an awesome up. rugged field watch that has quite a few functions. Once again, this one does have quite a few complications to it. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking this one out and to Amazon down in the description below. Of course, it will be an affiliate link, so it will help support if you do get one of these watches, but no pressure uh, if you want to get one of these watches. That would probably be my recommended way, but if nothing else, hopefully this can just be, uh, hopefully you guys learned something about this awesome watch and in what to look for in other watches. As always, guys, don't forget to comment, like, definitely share, please share, and subscribe if you're not already. That's it for now. I'm out.